Ever wondered how long you could survive on other planets in our solar system? Like, picture this. You're in your spacesuit just chilling on Venus, right? How long before things go really south? Let's find out. We'll use stunning space images from the latest probes and telescopes to take you on this journey. From the scorching surface of Mercury to the icy plains of Neptune, we're exploring the survivability of it all. Get ready for a thrilling ride through the cosmos. First stop, Mercury, the closest planet to our sun and home to some seriously extreme temperatures. We're talking about 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, hot enough to melt lead. Now you might be thinking, okay, but what about the night? Doesn't it get colder? And you're right, it does get chilly on Mercury. A bone chilling minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. See, Mercury's got practically no atmosphere to speak of. It's like trying to keep a blanket on a bed with no mattress. It ain't happening. So, without an atmosphere to trap heat, Mercury's surface is at the mercy of the sun's rays, or the coldness of space. So, how long could you survive on this cosmic easy-bake oven? Well, let's be generous and say you find a nice shady spot, away from the sun's death rays. You're in your state-of-the-art spacesuit, with its advanced cooling and heating systems working overtime. Even then, you're looking at a survival time of maybe, maybe a few hours tops. What would actually get you? Well, let's just say your fancy spacesuit isn't going to cut it forever. Eventually those extreme temperatures will find a way in. You're talking heat stroke, hypothermia, and a whole host of other unpleasant ways to go. But hey, at least the view of the sun would be spectacular, right before your eyeballs literally boiled away. Next up, we're heading to Venus, Earth's evil twin. Don't let the name fool you, this planet is anything but hospitable. Imagine stepping out onto the surface of Venus, you'd be immediately crushed by the atmospheric pressure, which is 90 times that of Earth. That's the equivalent of being 3,000 feet beneath the ocean's surface. And if the pressure doesn't get you, the heat certainly will. We're talking about a balmy 900 degrees Fahrenheit, even hotter than Mercury. Venus has what we call a runaway greenhouse effect. The atmosphere is thick with carbon dioxide, which traps heat like nobody's business. Oh, and did I mention the rain? Well, it's not exactly the refreshing kind. On Venus, it rains sulfuric acid. That's right, the stuff that can burn through your skin is just casually falling from the sky. So, how long could you last on this hellish planet? Not long, my friend. Not long at all. We're talking less than a second. The intense pressure would crush you, the heat would bake you, and the sulfuric acid rain would melt you, all at the same time. It'd be like being cooked, crushed, and dissolved in a giant pressure cooker. Venus, definitely not a place you want to spend your vacation. Okay, let's take a break from the death traps and visit our home sweet home Earth. As you know, Earth is that perfect little oasis in the vastness of space where life as we know it thrives. We've got liquid water, a breathable atmosphere, and temperatures that are, you know, actually survivable. But why is Earth so special? Well, for starters, we're in what's called the Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, but just right for liquid water to exist. And water, my friends, is the key to life as we know it. We also have our atmosphere to thank for our continued existence. It protects us from harmful radiation from the sun and helps regulate our planet's temperature. Plus, it's got just the right mix of gases, like oxygen, which, as you know, is essential for breathing. So, how long can you survive on Earth? Well, with proper care and attention, let's say about 80 years, give or take. But seriously, we often take our planet for granted. Let's remember to protect this pale blue dot because it's the only home we've got. Next, Mars the Red Planet's cold embrace. All right, back to the potentially deadly planets. Next on our cosmic road trip is Mars the Red Planet. Now Mars is a bit more, well, manageable than Venus. It's got a solid surface, so you won't be falling through clouds of gas. But don't get too excited. It's still no walk in the park. First off, the atmosphere on Mars is ridiculously thin, about 1% as dense as Earth's. That means almost no protection from the sun's radiation. And speaking of radiation, you better pack your sunscreen because those Martian rays are brutal. Then there's the temperature. The average temperature on Mars is a frosty minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's not as extreme as Mercury or Venus, but trust me, you'll still want to bundle up. So how long could you survive on Mars without a spacesuit? About as long as it takes you to suffocate, which is, you know, not very long at all. But let's say you've got your trusty spacesuit on, oxygen supply is good, and you're bundled up like it's the Ice Age you could potentially survive for a few hours. 
The real challenge on Mars is the long-term survival. We're talking about finding ways to create a breathable atmosphere, grow food, and protect ourselves from radiation. It's a tall order, but hey, humans are nothing if not resourceful. Now to Jupiter, the gaseous giant that would crush you. Hold on tight because we're heading to Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Now Jupiter is a gas giant, which means it doesn't have a solid surface like Earth or Mars. Instead, it's this swirling mass of hydrogen and helium gas. Imagine trying to land on a cloud. That's essentially what it would be like to land on Jupiter. As you descend into the atmosphere, the pressure would increase dramatically, and you'd be crushed faster than a soda can under a monster truck. And if somehow you survived that, the radiation would fry you like an egg on a sidewalk in August. Jupiter's got this intense magnetic field that traps charged particles from the sun, creating a radiation belt that would make Chernobyl look like a picnic in the park. So, how long could you survive on Jupiter? Yeah, you're not surviving this one. It's instant death, no question about it. One minute you're admiring the great red spot, the next minute you're a pancake of crushed atoms glowing from the radiation. Let's just admire Jupiter from a safe distance, shall we? Going to the outer parts of the solar system, Next up is Saturn, the ringed beauty of our solar system. Now Saturn is another gas giant, so like Jupiter, there's no solid surface to stand on. But Saturn has its own brand of danger, the wind. We're not talking about a gentle breeze here, folks. The winds on Saturn can reach speeds of over 1,000 miles per hour. That's faster than the speed of sound on Earth. You'd be ripped to shreds before you could say, hold on to your hats. And if the wind somehow doesn't get you, the cold will. The average temperature on Saturn is a frigid minus 274 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to freeze your blood solid in an instant. So, how long could you survive on Saturn? Yeah, you guessed it, instant death. You'd be a human popsicle, shredded by supersonic winds, all while being crushed by the immense atmospheric pressure. But hey, at least you'd have a spectacular view of those rings as you're being torn apart by the elements. Up next, Uranus. Get ready for the deep freeze as we head to Uranus the ice giant. Uranus is tilted on its side, which makes for some interesting seasons. Each pole experiences 42 years of continuous sunlight, followed by 42 years of darkness. But don't let that fool you, Uranus is far from hospitable. The atmosphere is composed mostly of hydrogen and helium, but it also contains methane, which gives the planet its blue-green color. And methane, while pretty to look at, is also incredibly toxic to humans. The temperatures on Uranus are nothing to scoff at either. The average temperature is a bone-chilling minus 357 degrees Fahrenheit. That's cold enough to freeze nitrogen, which makes up a good portion of our own atmosphere. So, how long could you survive on Uranus? Spoiler alert, not very long, we're talking about instant death again. The combination of extreme cold, toxic gases and crushing pressure would make short work of even the most resilient human. Let's just admire Uranus's unique tilt and beautiful blue-green color from a safe distance, shall we? Last stop on our cosmic death march is Neptune, the eighth and farthest planet from the Sun. Neptune is known for its stunning blue color, which is caused by, you guessed it, methane in its atmosphere. Like its ice giant cousin Uranus, Neptune is a cold and unforgiving place. The average temperature is a mind-numbing minus 392 degrees Fahrenheit, making it the coldest planet in our solar system. But Neptune's not just cold, it's also incredibly violent. The planet is home to some of the fastest winds in the solar system, with speeds reaching over 1,200 miles per hour. These winds whip up massive storms, like the Great Dark Spot, which was a storm system the size of Earth. So, how long could you survive on Neptune? You know the drill by now, instant death. The extreme cold, toxic atmosphere and supersonic winds would make sure of that. But hey, at least you'd go out with a bang, right? Or maybe a whimper as you're swept away by a Neptunian hurricane. So there you have it. A whirlwind tour of our solar system and the dangers that await us on other planets. It's pretty clear that Earth is the only place we know of that can support life as we know it. For now, anyway. If you enjoyed this cosmic journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more space adventures. We've got plenty more cosmic mysteries to unravel, so buckle up. Stay tuned for our next video where we explore the mysteries of black holes. Are they cosmic vacuum cleaners? Gateways to other dimensions? 
we'll dive into the science and the speculation and see what's really going on inside these enigmatic objects. Until then, keep looking up.